our sisters and brothers in Christ, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We give God thanks for yet another time and another day. Let us pray, Father in heaven, we give you thanks now for allowing us to see the dawn of a new day. Dear God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, your protection and your healing, your guidance and your direction. We thank you for giving us wisdom, knowledge, strength, and a better understanding. We pray, dear God, that you would never leave us nor forsake us, but that you would hold us in the hearts of your hand. We pray for mankind everywhere in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Where there's confusion, we pray that peace will abound. Where there's sorrow, we pray that joy will come. And we give you thanks now in Jesus' name. Let it all say amen. God bless you this morning. Got a word from you this, for you this morning from the book of First Kings, uh, chapter 21, beginning at verse 5. First Kings chapter 21, beginning at verse 5 through 10. And we are going to um, attempt to uh, share with you uh, today about that pink tornado, that tongue. The Bible says it's an unruly thing that no man can tame. But uh, I want to leave this thought with you today that says a premeditated tongue produces bloodstained hands. A premeditated tongue produces bloodstained hands. Ahab and Jezebel, partners in crime. The abuse of authority, uh, conniving wife. Conniving always involve others. The Bible reads from verse 5, 2 Kings chapter 21. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest not bread? And he said unto her, Because I speak to Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else it will please thee. I will give thee another vineyard for it. And answered, I will not give. He answered, And I will not give thee my vineyard. Here's, here's a case of wanting something that don't rightfully belong to you. The Jezebel and, and Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Doest thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat. Eat bread and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, both the Jezebel. Now, now, here, here is a conniving wife with a premeditated tongue, premeditated tongue of a, of a jealous husband. So they are going to combine. In fact, she just took over. I'll get it for you. So in verse 8, she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letter unto the elders, to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with neighbors. And she wrote this letter in saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Biel, before him, saying, Thou didst blame, blaspheme God and the king. And then carried him out and stoned him that he may die. A premeditated tongue, and if you, if you notice that, not only um, did the husband and wife conspire, but anytime you have a premeditated tongue, you can guarantee yourself others are involved. So they collected two false witnesses to bear witness upon what they had contrived to bring charges against uh, neighbor. Now, when, when, 
when the king's seal was used, the seal was more important than his signature. For the seal uh, denotes that it came straight from the king. Now, he didn't use the seal. His wife used the seal. My sisters and my brother Satan is a master at gathering, gathering, gathering all he can to destroy. You got to remember he didn't come to, to bless us. Satan comes to destroy us, to kill us, to rob and to steal from us. So Jezebel and Ahab conspired uh, to, to take Naboth, uh, Naboth uh, vineyard. But my sisters and my brothers, what I want to make clear about this, uh, uh, this uh, story is that from our childhood, our foreparents taught us that you shall read just what you saw. And it is amazing that uh, you can want something so bad. Naboth said, listen, you're not getting my vineyard because this is my inheritance. And I, I, we need to focus on inheritance. We sell out our parents and they struggle so hard to leave us some possession and, and we are willing to sell out our inheritance, not only physical things or property, but we will sell out even our spiritual being. A premeditated tongue will cause you to have blood stain on your hand. It is amazing uh, uh, when he was, uh, the, 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 the verse 11 shows us that the, the, the plot was, it succeeded, it was successful what they did. The men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were in the inhabitants of the city did as Jezebel had sent unto them and it was written in the letters she had sent unto them. And they proclaimed a fast and set neighbors among the people. And there came two, two men, children of Biel, and sat before him, and the men of Biel witnessed against him, and even against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. And they sent Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned, and, and, and he is dead. Ahab possession possesses Naboth's vineyard, and it came to pass when Jezebel heard Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said unto Ahab, Arise and take possession of the vineyard for the Jezreelite, which refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up and go down to the vineyard of Naboth both the Jezreelite to take possession of it, a scheme, a premeditated tongue will cause you to have blood stain on your hand. But our parents have taught us that you shall reap just what you sow. Now, to keep from prolonging the time, I'm gonna go over to 2 Kings chapter nine, verse 30, Three through 36. And we'll see how premeditation, uh, premeditation to, to kill somebody for whatever purpose or gain that you think uh, you could receive from it. My, my sisters and my brothers, you know, um, our four parents used to use a term, I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. But you know, many times we set the course of our end, whether it's good or bad. Second Kings chapter nine, beginning at verse uh, uh, 30, uh, 33. Look, look, look what happened from what they did with their hands and the same return unto him, to them. Verse 33 says, and she, threw down, and he said, throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of the blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trotted her under their feet. 
And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go and see this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. Verse 35 says, And they went out to bury her, and but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hand. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he has speak by his servant Elisha the Tishman, saying that in portions of Jezreel shall the dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. You reap what you sow. My sisters and my brothers, I encourage you to have a, a clean hand and a clear heart. And your end, your life may be bitter, but your end will be well. A premeditated tongue produces blood stain on your hand. Can you mind, can you imagine the people that are sleeping in their graves? behind a premeditated tongue. Can you imagine the men, women, boys, and girls that's in prison right now and didn't do no wrong because somebody had a premeditated tongue? And I want you to catch this now. When you got a premeditated tongue, trust me, my sisters and brothers, it involves others. For if you notice in the story, Jezebel had to bring up two false witnesses to bear witness against them. In the life of Christ, he had many false witnesses to bear witness against him. But if you got a clean hand and a pure heart, it'll be well with your soul in the end. We need to watch the things that we do and say. If you can't say anything good, don't say nothing at all. The power of life and death is in the tongue. My sisters and my brother, I appeal to you, speak life and not death. And what you do unto others will surely come back to you. My soul values more than silver and gold. So this life may be hard, but in the end, the right will win. Keep a clean hand and a pure heart. And God will bless you in the end. To you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, watch the things that you say and do. And don't have a premeditated mind or premeditated heart to do evil. I'd like to close with this. There was a parable in the Bible where uh, this servant owed the king a lot. And the king forgave him of his debt. But then somebody else was indebted to him and he will not Forgive them. Now, did he did he learn how to practice mercy? No. He experienced the gift of mercy, but he himself didn't learn nothing in, in, a, in a lesson of being merciful unto others that you might obtain mercy. So my sisters and my brothers, uh, today, uh, check your tongue and check the words that proceed out of your mouth. If you can, bless a man, please serve. And please, man, don't curse it. A thought for the day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.